Hello, welcome to lecture 2 of ELEC Engine 2 CI5. Uh, we'll be talking uh, about dependent sources and power. We'll explain what is, the diff what is the concept of a dependent source and why do we need them. And we'll also introduce the concept of power calculations and how we carry out them in a, in a DC circuit. Uh, later in the course, we'll also be explaining how to calculate the power for uh, circuits with uh, AC sources or even with, with general time varying sources. Uh, so uh, for now we'll talk about the power only for the DC part. Okay, we discussed in the previous lecture um, the, the independent sources. Independent sources means that you have uh, a voltage source. I can draw one for you here. You have a voltage source like this one. We can draw it this way. Okay. Um, or we can draw it this way. I, 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 it's, it's, we can use both. It, it supplies constant voltage. It, and this voltage can be 5 volts, 10 volts, 12 volts, depending on the source you are using. And also we talked about uh, current sources. And they usually a current source is drawn this way. So an arrow indicating the value of the current. And this one is trying to push a constant current. The value of the current in the current source here and the value in the voltage in the voltage source does not depend on the current or the voltage anywhere else in the circuit. Okay, but very often we will need to use um, uh, dependent sources. For example, let's take a look at this one here. This, this source is a voltage source. So it creates some voltage difference between this point and this point. But the value of this voltage source is dependent on some controlling voltage Vs somewhere else in your circuit it can be in a completely different uh, between two completely different points um, so the voltage here v is going to be equal to mu vs mu is a constant it's it, it depends on the value of the car of the of the voltage source uh, but it's simply it's a voltage between here and here which we call it v this point relative to this point is equal to mu multiplying vs where vs is a controlling voltage with this polarity so this combination is called voltage controlled voltage source. It's a voltage source, but it's controlled by another voltage source. So they call it volt or voltage value. They call it a voltage controlled voltage source. This one here is a voltage controlled current source because it's a current source. It supplies specific current I, but the value of this current is proportional to some controlling voltage Vs, which appears somewhere else in your circuit. Okay, um, so it's a current source. The current will be I equal to G V S. G is a is a is a constant of proportionality, and uh, V S is a controlling voltage. So this is voltage controlled voltage source. This is voltage controlled current source, and because we have two, we in, in the same way in the, in a, in, a, in an analogous way, we can get here current controlled current source, and current controlled voltage source. So this one here, this it's a current source, but it creates a current that's proportional to the current in some other branch of your circuit. Beta is a constant of proportionality. It can be 3, 1, 1.1, 1 .1, 10 to the power 5, depending on the circuit that you're going to have. And this one here is a voltage source, but the voltage difference it creates between these two nodes or these two points is proportional to the current flowing somewhere else in the circuit. Okay, so um, these, these, these units, mu, uh, mu, g, r, and beta, these are the constants for these uh, controlled sources or dependent sources. Here, this is voltage and this is voltage. So mu is going to be dimensionless. Here, this is voltage and this is current. So g is going to be unbearable volt or Siemens. You can see this is voltage. And when you multiply by G, you're going to get current. So G will have dimensions of ampere per volt or Siemens. This one here, it's, it's a, the controlling uh, quantity is current. And the resulting current is current as well. So beta is dimensionless because this is ampere and this ampere. Here, you have a controlling current and a voltage. So R will have units of volt volt per ampere volt per ampere is what we call ohm okay and we'll be talking more about this the, the ratio between the voltage and current 
we call it oh, we call it the ohmic value or the ohmic resistance. So this is ohm here. The unit of this of this resistance is called ohm. Why do we need to study dependent sources? Well, you will know that in your when you study electronics, that transistors are represented by an equivalent model, and this model has uh, a, a dependent source. Uh, you will know that the operational amplifiers that we use them for all type of analog signal analysis are modeled by dependent sources. You will know that any amplifier really can be represented by an equivalent uh, circuit that has a dependent source in it. So dependent sources are used very often to represent active devices. And this will be the subject that you're going to be using your electronic circuits. So uh, we're studying them right now because we're going to be using them later in our uh, electronic courses. Okay, we have here a very simple example. We have this is a voltage controlled voltage source. Uh, the a voltage between here and here, which is V naught, is equal to 20 multiplying by the controlling voltage Vs, which is a voltage between here and here. Okay, but this voltage Vs is equal to 2 volts. And the constant of proportionality is 20. So V naught with polarity between here and here. So this point is higher than this one is equal to 40. So what does this say? When the voltage between this point and this point is 2 volts, the voltage difference between this point and this point will be equal to 40 volts. So I can simply say here, I can simply write that V naught will be equal to 20. The constant of proportionality multiplying by 2 is equal to 40. Okay, in the same way for the other example, this will be 40 volts, of course, for the other thing here that we have, we have a current controlled current source. So this current source create a specific current in this branch, and this current I naught is equal to 50 IS, where IS is a controlling current, which is this one here. It's equal to 1 milliampere. Okay, so the current flowing here will be if equal to 50 multiplying by 1 milliampere. And this is actually very similar to what we have in bipolar junction transistors, where we have very little current flowing into the base and very strong current flowing out from the collector. So this is very typical of a, of a, of a, a Bayesian transistor. So for the second example, I can simply write here that I naught is equal to 50 multiplying IS, and this would be 50 multiplying by 1 milliampere, 10 to the minus 3, is going to be equal to 50 milliampere. Okay? So, um, so as I said, these tools are very useful. We are going to be hearing about them a lot in, uh, in electrical engineering, and understanding how to analyze the circuit with, with these sources present is very important. Now we move to talk about the concept of power. Uh, we agreed in the previous lecture that when the, the voltage of one point is higher than the other, then the electric field is flowing from the positive to the negative terminals, forcing positive charges to move from the positive to the negative terminals. And we agreed as they move, they lose, they lose energy. Uh, or, and energy and power are actually uh, more or less, they, ha they, they are related to one another because power is the rate is the rate of uh, dissipation of energy or the rate of generation of energy. Um, so this is the situation that we have here. When you have an, a, a component like this one, this, this, com this is a component. Usually we use this box notation here to denote an electric component. If you have the voltage is with this shown polarity and the current is flowing from the positive voltage to the negative voltage through the device, through the device, then this device dissipates power. Okay, there is some power dissipated inside. And we say that this and power dissipated is given is given a positive value. It's it's a notation we're gonna be using. Power dissipated is given a positive value. This is we have an opposite situation here. We have a voltage positive negative between these two terminals. So this terminal has a higher potential than this one, say five volts, whatever. And the current is actually flowing opposite to the electric field. So this means that the positive charges is flowing opposite to the electric field in this direction, okay, through the device, through or through this component here, through this component here. So this means you're actually 
there is power being generated. There is power being generated because we said we, we explained before moving against the field means you are gaining energy. You are gaining energy, okay? So this device actually does, does create energy, and this is what we have uh, when we have batteries. So uh, when we have, say, um, um, a voltage source, a battery like this one, this is positive, negative. Current will always flow this way. Well, if it is the only if, if it is the only component in your circuit, current will flow from negative to positive through the device. Notice that and it's very important to understand this. Current flowing through this battery from negative to positive. Okay, so this means that this 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 component generates energy or generates power. Okay, it's very important to understand that. So this one dissipates power. This one generates power. Okay, now we have to see how do we, how do we calculate power. So I, the formula for calculating power is actually imported from electromagnetics, and I'm gonna be uh, discussing it in the next slide. If you have any component, any electric component, it can be an inductor, a capacitor, a resistor, a resistance, whatever the case it is. It has a voltage V of T across it. It has a current I of T going through it. These two can be time varying. Okay, so this one can be sinusoidal, this sinusoidal is a different phase. Okay, the power, the instantaneous power, the power at any instant is equal to the product of the value of the voltage by the value of the current, V of T multiplied by I of T. Okay, so this is the instantaneous power. And this instantaneous power can be oscillating with time or in DC circuits, the arc it is constant with time. If you want to get something called an average power, and this is a very important concept that we'll be seeing again when we talk about uh, AC circuits. Average power means you integrate over a period of time T, and then you divide by T. This is a way to, uh, to average any quantity. You integrate it over a period of time, and then you divide by that period of time. And T is what we call the chosen period of time. It it can be if it's if these two are sinusoidal signals, it will be the the time of one period of this sinusoidal signal. Okay, uh, so it's very important to understand there is something called the instantaneous power, and this is a function of time. It can be time varying, and there's something called the average power, and this is a number. This is a number. Okay, why it's a number? Because you carried out an integration, you get rid of the time dependence, you divide it by a constant value called t. t it can be 1 millisecond, 10 milliseconds, whatever. So all these are numbers, and BAV is going to be a number. So instantaneous power can be time varying. Average power is simply a, a number, a figure that we can use. Now, let's take a look at power calculations for DC circuits. If you have a DC component uh, or DC circuit, so this means nothing's changing with time. For example, you have here a voltage V, which can be 10 volts. It's giving, it's flowing through a resistor. It's giving a current I. The current I can be one ampere. Okay. So these two do not change with time. DC means direct current. Nothing is changing with time. It's a constant battery. There is no fluctuation with time. So if you go and try to find the average power. Take any time t, doesn't matter because both of them are constants as shown here. Take any value, 1 millisecond, 2 milliseconds, 10 seconds, doesn't matter. Multiply v by i, but these two are constants. So I can take them out from the integral. This can be 5 volts, this one ampere. Then I'm integrating dt from 0 to t, this will give me t. t will cancel with t, end up with this expression. So, in DC, in DC circuits, the instantaneous power which is the product V and I, is the same as the average power. And both of them are equal to the product of the voltage across the component by the current through the component. This number will be positive if there is power dissipated in the device, as shown here, because they have polarity positive negative, and then positive charges are moving from positive terminal to negative terminal, causing a current in this direction. In that case, it's, it's, it is power dissipated, and the average power is going to be a positive number. But if you have a component that is supplying power, then the current direction will be actually the opposite, and this means that the average power, or the instantaneous power in this case, will be negative. Okay, so it's very important to understand this concept here. 
So for DC, cir DC circuits, instantaneous power has the same expression as the average power, and both of them are constants, are equal to V multiplying I. V and I are the values of voltage and the current for any component. And uh, if you get, and if, if it's power dissipated, then current's flowing in through the device from positive to negative terminal, and then the product VI will be positive. But if the current actually flows from negative to positive, then in that case, it is power being supplied, power being generated. And in that case, it's going to be a negative value. We have here an example. It's a, it's a circuit. It has a, a voltage source here. It has a current source here. It has three, three resistors here. And you want to know whether VS is absorbing or supplying energy. And how how our, our power here in this case is it sub absorbing? Let's actually talk about more about power. So this should be power. Is Vs absorbing or supplying power, and how much? You can see this six ampere is flowing through this battery, but it's flowing from positive to negative. So this means that power is actually being supplied, supplied to this battery. This battery is charging. Is not discharging. So what caused it? What caused what caused this reversal of the direction of the current? Well, because this battery wants to push current this way in the circuit. It wants to push current this way from positive to negative through the circuit. Okay, but there is this current source which is more powerful. It's trying to push current the opposite direction, and in this specific example, this source wins the, this competition, and then it forces current to go through the battery from the positive to the negative terminal through the battery itself. So this battery is actually, it's actually uh, so it's absorbing energy, it's not supplying energy. And it's very difficult to calculate the, the power. Power supply is going to be a positive number, is equal to Vs multiplying the 6 ampere. Okay, so Vs is equal say, to 5 volts, so this will give you 5 by 6 is equal to 30 watts. Okay, so this reveals this example reveals something very interesting. If you have multiple sources in your circuit, some of these sources are forced to receive power from the circuit. Okay, because the other sources are more stronger and they are trying to push currents uh, in the opposite direction. This will become clearer when we start to do um, more nodal and loop analyses and see how these sources interact with one another. Okay, we have here a circuit. Uh, the circuit has already been solved. Um, every box here represents a component. It can be, it's, it's, it's a resistor or maybe a battery, we don't know. Uh, and you have here two voltage sources, 12 volts and 24 volts. And we would like to calculate the power dissipated in every component and, and every source. Let's take a look at one by one. This one here is, is the first component. The voltage is positive, negative, and the current is 1 ampere, and it's flowing throughout this branch. So it's flowing this way. It's flowing through this device, okay, this way. Okay, so the current inside the device or the component, it's a component actually here, flows from positive to negative. So this means that power is dissipated. Power is dissipated inside that device because it, it flow, current flows from the positive voltage to the negative voltage through the component. So I can simply write here that B1, the power dissipated in the first component, is equal to 16, multiplying 1 is equal to 16. Okay, let's go to component number 2. This is component number 2, the current is 1 ampere flowing in this branch. Current of 1 ampere is flowing in this branch. It's flowing from positive to negative through the component, then it's power dissipated as well. So I can simply write here that B2 is equal to 4 multiplying 1. Let's talk about B3. Okay, so the power dissipated in the third co co uh, component that we have. Again, this is positive negative 12 volts. So this is higher than this one. And the current is flowing in this direction from positive to negative through the device, through this component. So it's going to be the power dissipated will be 12 multiplying 1. So I can simply say this is 12. I can simply write it here. This is 12 multiplying 1 is equal to 12. So let's talk about the fourth component before. 
before uh, again positive negative currents flowing through the the component from positive to negative so again it's going to be dissipated power and its value is equal to uh, 8 multiplying 2 is equal to 16. now let's talk about the two sources we are done with the components we have two sources here we have this source let's maybe talk about this one first this source you can see the currents flowing from negative to positive through the source. It's currents flowing this way. So this one supplies energy. It supplies energy. It does not absorb energy. And the power, and I will call this one BS1, is going to be negative. It's minus 24 multiplying 3 is minus 72. Okay, so I'm going to call this one BS1. Let's take a look at let's take a look at the second source PS2. For the second source, this is positive negative, and through the device, the current two ampere, you can see this current two ampere, it's flowing in this branch. It is the same current in this branch, okay? It's flowing from positive to negative through the device. So this battery is forced to absorb power, it's forced to charge. Why is it forced to charge? Because this source is way stronger. So it's trying to push current this direction, and it was, it was able to defeat it. So it forced current to go through it. So BS2, the power here, there will be power absorbed, so it's going to be positive. So it's going to be here 12, 12 by 2, this will be equal to 24. Now let's sum all these powers. Let's sum B1 plus B2 plus B3 plus B4 plus BS1 plus BS2. So this will give you here 16 plus 4, plus 12, plus 16, minus 72, plus 24. Let's see here. So these two, okay, let's see here. So this will give us uh, 20, 32, 48, 72, minus 72, you get 0. Okay, so the total answer is 0. Well, so this, this reveals something called conservation of power. Conservation of power of an electric circuit, okay? So power is conserved in an electric circuit. Whatever power is supplied by your sources will be absorbed by your components, okay? Or the sum of the total power supplied is equal to zero. So this what, or the sum of all, of all power dissipated is equal to zero. So now we treated them all as power dissipated. The, the the one was both valued indeed they are the absorb uh, the absorb power the one negative one is the one that supplies power okay so so this one is supplying this is the only one supplying power here and everyone else in this component is receiving power from it okay so this conservation of power is not a coincidence it's it's one of the of the of the properties of electric circuits and again the origin of this is actually in electromagnetics we can trace, it, trace the origin of this to electromagnetics again, and you'll study this in electromagnetic courses. Okay, we have here one more example. We have a circuit. Um, this circuit has been already solved. So um, we know the currents flowing everywhere in the circuit. We know the voltage everywhere in the circuit. Uh, we have here a dependent source. So you can see this is a voltage source, but the value of the voltage difference between here and here is equal to 8 multiplied by the current Ix. So this is a controlling current. And this controlling current is flowing through this branch and its value is 2 ampere. Okay? So this, this voltage difference between here and here is actually 16. It's 8 by 2. Okay? So now we calculate, we, we want to calculate the current I node. There is a current flowing here called the I node. It's flowing through this component. But we don't know what its value is. But we know from the conservation of power, that the sum of all power dissipating in the circuit is equal to zero. There are actually three different ways of express, expressing conservation of power. Power supplied by sources is equal to power dissipated in components. This is one way. Or power dissipated in the whole circuit is equal to zero. Or power supplied in the whole circuit is equal to zero. Okay? We are going to use the second one, which you are more familiar with, that the sum of all power dissipated in the circuit is equal to zero. And remember, power dissipating in a, in a source that supplies energy is negative. Okay? So let's take a look at them one by one. Let's go to component one. 
This one here, the voltage is 6 volts. There is a current I node flowing from positive to negative. Then power is dissipated. And this value is 6 I node. Let's go to the second component. The voltage difference is 12, but the current is flowing this way. This means that this component, you can see current flowing from negative to positive through the component. So this component is supplying power. Okay? And the power supplied is my, it's my, uh, the value of the power dissipated is going to be negative, which means it's power supplied. The power dissipated is minus 12 multiplying 9 as shown here. Okay? So this is the second one, second component. Let's talk about the third one. You have a current 3 here is flowing this way. This is positive negative. You can see it's flowing from negative to positive through the device. So again, this component is 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 supplying power, is not dissipating power. So the power dissipating this component is going to be negative, is equal to 10 multiplied by minus 3. Okay, it's fine. Now let's go to the sources. We have one, two, three sources. Uh, this one here, we have positive, negative, the current's flowing in this direction. Okay, so uh, six and my six, the six volts here comes from, from negative to positive. So this one supplies power, and the value of this power is minus six, is, is actually six multiplying by two, which means that the power dissipated in this component is negative. It is six multiplied by minus two. The current here is Ix, which is two, and this is six, but the current flows from negative to positive. So this means that this acts as a power supplying component, okay, or power supplying source. So the power here, power dissipated, is six multiplied by minus two. Let's talk about this four volts here. You have four volts. Again, eight ampere flowing from negative to positive through the device. So this device or through this component. So this component supplies power. And the value of this power is 4 multiplied by minus 8. The last one is this one here. This is 16. And the current is 11. And the current is flowing from positive to negative. And through this source. So the other, com other sources force the current to go this way. So this one really receives power. So the power dissipated in this one, the power received by this one, the power absorbed by this component is positive. It's 8 multiplying 2. Because remember, Ix is 2 ampere, okay? So 8 by 2 multiplying 11. So the total voltage is 16 multiplying 11. When we sum all these and then force the equation that the power dissipated, the sum of the all power dissipated in the components equal to 0, we'll be able to solve for I0. Okay, so this slide summarizes what I said. I calculated B1 with 6 I note. I calculated B2, which is this one here. It's supplying power. It's not dissipating power. So its power dissipated is negative. We calculated the B3. It's 10 multiplied by minus 3, so it's minus 30. We supplied BS1. BS1 is this one here. It's 4 multiplying minus 8. It's minus 32. It's supplying power. It's not dissipating power. BS2 is this one here, it's 8 multiplying 2 multiplying 11, so this, this one here is, is dissipating, is receiving or absorbing power, 176, and the last one is BS3 is this one here, so you have 6 volts multiplying minus 2, again remember current from, from negative to positive, so you get minus 12. Now if you sum all of these, and we said that the total sum must be equal to 0 from conservation of power, and you set this equal to zero, you solve for I naught, and you get that I naught is equal to one ampere. Okay, so remember an electric circuit, um, a DC electric circuit at least, the power supplied by the sources is the power dissipated in the components. Or, or let's maybe rephrase this one here, the total dissipated power in the circuit must be equal to zero because some components supply power so the dissipated power is negative, and some components absorb power, so the dissipated power is positive, and the, the equation must be balanced. Later, when we study capacitors and inductors, we'll get into the issue of energy stored. Uh, but right now, we are talking only about um, uh, components that does not have memory, as we'll explain later. So for resistors, the sum of power, resistive networks, the sum of power dissipated must be equal to zero.